sometimes pear trees during the summer or early spring can develop what you call fire blight. And we've got actually a prime example of it here. And there's a reason why it's called bacterial fire blight. It's because this branch literally looks like it's been scorched by a flame. Uh, one of the identifying factors of this fire blight, and let's see if we can find one here. This is a pretty close example of it, if you can see it here. It's the shepherd's crook. The top of this branch has curved down like the crook in a shepherd's cane. What it, uh, the main thing that you can do with this to remedy it, and unfortunately this tree has a lot of it, but some trees you'll recognize it maybe on only one or two branches, is actually prune it back. Now, since it's a bacterial problem rather than a fungus or something, and we'd recommend this for funguses anyway, but since it's a bacterial problem, we actually want to go ahead and wipe down whatever tool we are using. In this case, we've got some loppers to ensure that we don't infect other parts of the branches. And this is for every single cut that we make. So you would go ahead and make your cut, which we would look on this branch and see that we want to get six inches below where it is infected. Uh, in this particular branch, that is actually all the way down right there. Clip that branch off with a clean cut. We'll set that to the side for the moment, and then you would wipe down your shears with either bleach, a 70% alcohol solution, or you could do pure bleach with a 90 to 10% water to bleach. So 90% water, 10% bleach. And then you would continue your way around this tree. Unfortunately, this particular tree is going to probably have a lot of it cut off of it, but we will get it taken care of uh, and hopefully it will come back next year. So right on this branch, we can actually see a great example of that shepherd's crook right here as it focuses. We're going to go down that branch and we can start to see that there's actually a little bit of green growth. We're going to look right about here, if I can get the camera and some leaves out of the way. We can see that the branch is starting to kind of come back right there. We're going to go ahead and move six to eight inches down below that. So the branch was all the way up here. We're going to go six to eight inches below that in order to make sure that we have gotten all the bacterial problems out of the way. And then again, of course, we're going to wipe those shears down before we cut the next one. So we've actually trimmed away all of the bacterial fire blight on this tree, or as much as we can identify on here. And as you can see, we've taken out a ton of the branches. If I turn over here just a little bit, we have lost a lot of these branches. Now, the number one thing you're going to want to do with these branches, get them far, far away from any of your other fruit trees, apples and pears especially, because this is a, the, the disease is housed in these branches and can transfer up to, uh, over to other trees. Um, you'll either want to burn them or you'll want to double bag them up and put them in your dumpster. Uh, to get them away and make sure that that doesn't spread anywhere. This is not something you would want to put in a compost because you might be bringing that back later and it's going to stay in these branches for a long, long time, uh, basically feeding on anything that's still somewhat alive in there. So there are a few preventions that you can do. You can use a anti or a bacterial side. The name of it, and I pull this piece of paper out so I don't mess it up, Streptomycin sulfate is the active ingredient in that, and you can apply that any time before this plant starts fruiting between the budding stage and when it's still flowering. And that will help remedy a lot of this situation. That's what this producer is going to do come next spring when they get to uh, the budding time. It's already too late for them on the other one. Or you can do some copper sulfate during the bud, uh, during, during the bud swell stage. Um, the reason that you would do that the copper sulfate is a fungicide. It's not going to take care of this bacteria here, but it will be a healthier tree that can maybe fend this off a little bit better if you were to apply that. The final thing you can do, you can choose some cultivars that are somewhat resistant. I'm actually gonna turn the camera around to another type of pear that we have over there. There is a couple 
of branches that have that problem uh, with some fire blade, but not nearly as much. And it was right next to this other tree over here. So we know that that variety is probably maybe not resistant, but less susceptible to it. So planting a variety of pears will help you from losing your whole orchard if you were to do this. If you want any more information on growing pears in Oklahoma, look up the fact sheet HLA6257, uh, Growing and Producing Pears in Oklahoma at osufacts.okstate.edu. Follow K County OSU Extension on social media to keep up to date on upcoming events, educational information, and research-based information. Thank you for watching.